Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another word-filled message by David Entry. Preaching is the means by which God manifests his word and nourishes our spirits. May the life of God enter into you and you as you listen to this message. Be blessed. I see grace coming to us. I think in most of Paul's letters, but I think in Galatians chapter 6, verse 18, verse 18, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Second Timothy chapter um, 4, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 22 or 24, it talks about grace be with you. Grace be with you. Yeah. <laughs> I know some of it hasn't sunk in. Grace can be with you. Yeah. Did you understand that? Grace. What is grace? Grace is favor. Things just, you know, when they say, oh, this person is so gracious. So gracious. It's like it's pleasant to be around a person. And when they say someone has grace, that means things just work for them. Grace is the most powerful difference maker in life. So some of you, I know some of you don't know that our slogan in Caris is the grace makes the difference. The grace makes the difference. Grace will cancel any sign of disgrace. You can't carry grace and be disgraced. Grace is powerful. So, sometimes when you are going out, leaving the house, ask God, let grace be with me. You are going to for interviews. Believe God. Let grace be with me. He said, Second Timothy, let grace be with you. And Galatians said, this I took it further. He said, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with your spirit. No one can take it from you. It's inside your spirit. It's like, grace be with you. First Timothy, it ends by grace be. Almost every of the letters, it said, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Why is it that he's talking to Christians and writing to Christians and the first thing he'll say, the greetings is, grace and peace be multiplied to you. And the Bible says that grace came with Christ. John 1, 17. Grace came. So it's like grace is a person. When Christ came, grace came by Christ. Truth and grace. Grace and truth. I, I want, you see, one of the things you should believe God for is grace. Yeah. I thank God I have grace. But I want more grace. Believe God for grace. If you're a woman and you have grace, you don't need makeup. Whatever you do looks okay. Whether you do your hair, you don't do your hair. Whether it's, it's, it's like you're fine. When you have grace, where others, they don't, people don't even look at their face to consider them. They look out for you. Somebody will be standing in front of you and they are interested in you, who is behind the person. They are waiting for this person to get off. Yeah, we're waiting for you. That's grace. And it says, grace be with you. In Acts, in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, I seem to quote this scripture every day. I don't know why. It says that, and when they had prayed, the place where they had assembled shook. And what happened to them? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that, and they speak the word of God with boldness. Now look at the next verse. That's a very interesting one. The next verse, and the multitude of them that believe were one hearted. Neither did anyone, uh, any of them that ought of the things which they possessed was, but they had a, look at the next verse. Um, it says that, and great power, with great power, the apostles witnessed of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace. Great one. When you get a 
expose yourself to a place of prayer, corporate prayer, you get grace. You get boldness and great. Listen, this June, you must, you must change your status. Your status must change. One of the things I do aggressively is to see how I can guard the belittle grace I've got. But that is what is taking care of me. When Paul was going through all this, he went to God. He was praying, God, I got three times. Remove this thing from me. It's too much for 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. He prayed three times that this devil turned in my flesh, this thing in my physical body. Something was troubling Paul. Paul oh. He prayed three times that God removed. God said, no, don't worry. You don't need me to remove it. My grace is sufficient for you. Yeah. I've been quoting it, but I didn't realize the implication. It was given in the face of complex situations for his life. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect. Grace. Somebody's catching grace. Last, last Monday, God laid on my heart that this is a season of favor. This is a season of favor. And this, today, God is taking it further, saying that you are catching grace. The same thing. Don't be worried about the problems. Be worried about gracelessness. If you don't have grace, you got to start worrying, even if there's no problem. <laughs> because when a problem shows up, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? If you have monthly payments, maybe insurance, or car, or a mortgage, you don't worry once your work is okay. But when your work is gone, and the month is about to end, then you start getting worried. Your worry is not that you have a mortgage, but the, your worry is that you don't have the grace it takes to handle the mortgage. I mean, your mortgage can be, like many companies and companies, uh, your mortgage can be 20,000 pounds a, a month or 50,000 pounds a month. Tesco, when they rent a place, this is the sometimes 60,000 pounds. But it's not a problem. It's not a problem. The mortgage is never a problem. It's the ability to handle it. So, challenges in your life, who doesn't like you, who likes you, what laws are being passed, all those things are never a problem. Who told you they are a problem? It is when there's no enough grace. When you don't have enough grace to take you from here to there. You are going to Scotland. You are driving to Scotland. Whether you are using electric car, or petrol or a diesel and electric car you, it can take you to, only to Birmingham and after looting there are no charging uh, ports then you should be worried you should be worried but if your car is a special type it can take you to on one charge take you to Scotland and back and they are even charging ports a lot after Birmingham, you don't have it. People are worried. What, what, what are they worrying? What's the problem? It's because you have enough grace. When you have grace, what people call problem, you are wondering why, why, are, you, why are they worried? Grace be with you. I said, Grace be with you. Grace be with you. Grace be with you. And he said, great grace was upon them. Hey! It's not, not cheap grace. Great grace. It doesn't matter the complex situation. When they get there, things work for them. It doesn't matter where, whatever is going on. When they get there, it's working for them. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. When you, they said there is no goodness, they said, don't worry, I'm coming with my own goodness. It's following. When I get there to show up, 
when I get there, goodness is coming. There's no kindness, don't worry. There's no favor, don't worry. It's coming with me. It's coming with me. Grace came by Jesus. So you can be a person, wherever you show up, grace shows up. Wherever you go, grace goes. I see you catching grace. I see you increasing in grace. May grace be multiplied upon your life. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. He said, and God is able to make, you see, there's grace for marriage, grace for money, grace for uh, promotion, grace for car, grace for possession, grace for letting your, your wife not have problem with you, even when you make a mistake. Grace for letting your husband not make a big issue. Grace for in-laws liking you. Grace for hair growing. Oh, come on. I, I, I think I'm preaching. And what I want to submit to you that it is possible. Okay, listen. It is possible. Bible talks about um, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10. It says that the God of uh, minister according to the God, the God of all grace or the um, manifold grace of God. So many-sided grace. Grace uh, is not just one thing. Manifold grace of God. But the, what I want to draw your attention to this text, not this text, to the scripture about is there are all kinds of graces. There are all kinds of graces. When I stand to minister, I have a grace. Oh, so there's a grace for that. When some of the singers they stand to sing, you, you can tell that. So people have graces for all kinds of things. So grace for that, grace for that. But it says that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Second Corinthians chapter nine verse eight said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Oh, I feel like preaching to somebody. All grace, every form of grace you need is abounding towards you. God is, watch this, God is able. So now, you have to tell God, are you able? Then you have to do it for me. I saw it in your Bible, in the scripture, in your word, that you are able. Father, increase grace upon my life. And I'm speaking as a prophet. That some people are changing their status. You are moving from, you are moving from a graceless life to a grace filled life. You are moving to a grace-filled life. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are abounding in grace. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that means that when they say abound towards you, God supplies grace. But there are times you need a bit more supply. A bit more supply. So when they say a car, a car is 1.5 liters. Another one is 3 liters. The 3 liters, the engine takes more. So the engine needs more fuel to power it. So if your engine is five liters and your the supply is coming like um, one one uh, one point two liters it's going to trouble the engine it's, it's, you can't really move so then God has to cause more to abound so the, the manufacturers they make sure that depending on the size of the engine so you see Ford Focus another Ford Focus 
one is three liters, one is 1.2. They all look the same. But the way they've manufactured it, the supply of fuel in this one, because it, needs, it has to cause fuel to abound into, in this engine. Now, Bible says God is able to cause grace to abound. Uh, oh, uh, your life is going to be a grace table, table grace. Table, table grace life. Table grace life. Table grace life. God will make grace abound towards you. Yeah. You are struggling with all kinds of things in your life. You need grace. You need grace. Sometimes you just have to pray, God, have mercy on me and let grace abound. Let grace. I feel a lot of people here, I just can sense in my spirit. A lot of people here, your status is changing. They said, Master, we have taught all night. Luke chapter 5. We have taught all night and caught nothing. Luke chapter 5 from verse 5 somewhere there. We've taught all night and caught nothing. But in the verse 4, Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. Not to wash it, to catch. Drought means to catch it. Go there and let, let. And the guys, we've taught all night and caught nothing. The best time to catch fish is in the night. I thank God for giving me insight about grace. And so the middle of my name is grace. And then when carries, God gave us the leadings to start carries. The name that came on my heart is grace. I will choose the Hebrew name for grace, which is carries. When you have grace, you can't be disgraced. And God is able. The reason why you are struggling about some stuff and things haven't changed is you don't have grace for that particular thing. Grace. God is able to make grace abound to you. Maybe one of these days I have to teach on how to uh, cause working abounding grace. Yeah. It says, in Philippians, I think chapter 4, verse 6 or 7, it said, We are, you are partakers with me of my grace. So you can share in the grace someone carries. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 also. Yeah, verse 7. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you because I have. I have you in my heart. In as much as both in my, bond, my bonds and in the defense and the confirmation of the God, ye are all partakers of my grace. That's why who your pastor it matters. <laughs> so you are all partakers of my grace. Partakers. You might not have that grace, but when you connect yourself to someone who carries it, it begins to work in your direction. Sometimes grace is like electric current. If you can bring your wire and connect it to my wire, the same power will begin to work. The only thing is people can come to church and they are insulated. So they are near, near the wire which carries the grace, but the insulation, because of their mindset, their attitude, their oh, just so many things, can insulate you from connecting to grace. I pray every insulation against you that makes you not be able to tap into grace, may that insulation be stripped of you in the name of Jesus. May the insulation be stripped of you in the name of Jesus. And may you catch grace. May you catch grace. May you catch grace. May you catch grace. Greater grace. 
abounding grace in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.